What I love about the East End of London is that around every corner there's a hidden historical gem to discover. Just like here, down Grace's Alley near Whitechapel. And behind this facade of five Victorian terraced houses lies one of the city's best kept secrets. Built in 1858 by landlord John Wilton as an extension at the back of his bar, it's now one of our most important cultural landmarks. This is Wilton's musical, the oldest surviving musical in the world. It's a bit haunting coming in here. It's like a time capsule. Takes you back to what some would call the good old days. And gentlemen, Miss Barbara Long! How would you like to school? Evolving from pub sing-alongs from the 1860s, the music hall was the most popular entertainment of its day. A mixture of crowd-pleasing songs, comedy and speciality acts, its legacy has been celebrated on both film and television. Carol Ziedman is the chief tour guide at Wilton's. So what was it like here back then in the 1860s when it was opened? Very lively. <laughs> in John Wilton's day, we have eyewitness accounts that there were 1,300 <laughs> people in here with extra chairs put in. Must have been on each other's shoulders or something. It must have been pretty packed. Structurally, it was much as you see it now. Yeah. It was the decorations that were different. The walls were pale blue and salmon pink. The walls were covered with mirrors. The balcony fronts were made of papier-mâché reinforced with plaster. And of all the gas lights, the most spectacular was a great big sunburner lamp. And the whole thing was covered in a solid mass of 27,000 pieces of richly polished glass in prismatic feathers, spangles and spires. So who was the most famous act ever billed here at Wilton's? It was George Leyburn, Champagne Charlie. He would appear in his top hat, white tie and tails, aping the manners of the swells and the toffs and singing his song, Champagne Charlie. Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask Michael Kilgariff is an author and chairman of ceremonies who believes that the pop song has its roots in music hall. How important was music, did it sort of achieve a style of its own? The songs themselves began to reflect the lives of the people who were coming to the halls. It was always about the mother-in-law, yeah. you know, and troubles with the wife. In the earlier days, there, there wasn't really much of a chorus, as we understand it. And the emphasis began to move from the verses to the choruses. Yeah, where everybody, jo jo everybody joined, joined in. in. Yeah. The rather more jolly, style of song began to emerge. There were thousands and thousands of songs written to feed this new thirst and hunger for this kind of songs, which reflected, say, work and family life. Well, what would you say were the overall causes of the demise of the music hall? It all actually got a bit tedious after 30 or 40 years. It tended to be the same old subjects, time yeah. after time. Yeah. The other thing that put the tin lid on it, really, was the influence of American music coming over, which was so much more sophisticated. Unfortunately, now, the decline of the music hall era is mirrored in the decline of these buildings. So what fuels your sort of enthusiasm for preserving halls like this? Well, there isn't another hall like this. And it's also the music hall that had the first performance of the Can Can, which is a good enough reason <laughs> to preserve it for posterity. Old time music halls were like the careers of the stars that appeared in them, brilliant but brief. They're now a part of our entertainment heritage, not just historical monuments. And some of them, like Wilton's, are working museums, so we should cherish them while we can, because that is show business.